Hey, how's it going? And uh, today in this video, I'm going to show you how to optimize your ads in Facebook. Okay, so I'm going to take you behind the scenes of a, a big account. Uh, we're spending around 6K per day. Okay, 6K USD per day. Okay, so like everybody starts from zero. Uh, everybody is scrubs at first and then we like uh, evolve and get better over time. So don't don't look at these numbers and like, shit, I can't do this. Okay, so you got to be progressive about things and like be very uh, logical about the decisions that you make when, uh, when you're optimizing your ads as well. Because um, all you're trying to do is playing a stock market. Okay, you're trying to put a dollar in and get back three dollars, four dollars out. Okay, so like, um, let's let's talk about how you're gonna do this. I'm gonna dive into the ad account as well, so that later you can get a sense uh, of what I'm talking about as well. Okay, so um, when you launch the ad, right, first three days don't touch it. Okay, really, if you do any type of experiment, you need some data to make uh, statistically significant decisions. If you can't do that, don't touch it. Okay, really, just don't touch it. Just don't even open up your ads manager. It's not gonna go be good for your mental health. Okay, after the three days, you go into optimization. Okay, um, let me tell you exactly and show you how to do it. Okay, so first, always understand what your campaign objective is. If you're optimizing for leads, you need to go and find the metrics that are important for leads. Okay, if you're optimizing for purchase, for example, e-commerce, so there's transaction online, people are paying credit card online. You need to find that metric that is important. Okay, go down to the most bottom of funnel metrics. Okay, and then afterwards, make the decision there. Okay, so you can see this account, okay? Uh, massive, massive budgets uh, running here. You can see like even 11 million people reach, right? So don't don't think that like, um, just because it's a very big account and like what, 300, 300K spent on this uh, means that, that you, you can't do this, okay? Okay, so let me show you how I uh, make decisions, how we meet a buy and the strategy behind it, okay? The strategy behind that is not to lose money, <laughs> okay? So uh, once you understand that, yeah, okay? So for example, this is an e-commerce store. And in e-com, the objective is conversion, is ROAS, right? If I see that the ROAS drops, then I got to do something about it. If it doesn't drop, then that's good, okay? So if you're doing cost per lead, the, the objective that you should be worried about is cost per lead, right? Um, you want to know how much you're paying for someone to come in and book a call with you or someone to come in and come into your sequence, something like that. Right, so always look at the bottom of funnel approach. In this case, because it's ecom, I'm going to um, uh, what's it called? I'm going to focus on ecom. So on the right hand side here, press columns. Okay, I have my own default favorite ecom co column, whatever it is. Okay, but you can do the same thing for yourself. So you you come in here, press columns, go down to customize columns. Okay, and then um, you can see here on the right hand side, you can search for any new uh, uh columns that you need to add. Okay, so for me personally, uh, you can see here, uh, this is the XG Media one. Okay, let me just show you. Yeah. Okay, so I press columns, mouse ecom. Okay, you can see uh, I am in link clicks, link clicks out of bound, cost per unique link click, cost per unique landing page, cost per unique add to cart, cost per unique purchase. I like to see it as, as progression, right? So I can see uh, the drop off, right? So this gets increasingly more expensive. This makes 100% sense. Okay, then afterwards, I go into um, instead of the cost per, I go into the individual metric. Okay, so uh, add to cart, website add to cart, cost per checkout, checkout initiate, purchase, purchase. Right, can you see here? Up to this point, right, I, I couldn't care less about the link clicks. Right, this is why I segment between the cost as well as, as the, the bottom of the funnel things. Because in e commerce, all you're doing is looking for the purchase. You don't care about anything else. Right, so uh, stuff like this cost per unit purchase, important. Cost per unit checkout is when you don't have a purchase. Okay, so uh, and then afterwards at the end is always the ROAS, right? So uh, once I go in, I come into my columns, scroll to the right first. Okay, don't look at the data like it's like so many things. Focus on one metric, one metric only. Okay, and in this case, uh, what's important here is ROAS, right? So you can see a ROAS is here. Uh, I think the break even for this is a 1.6. So everything is, is either on cold or warm traffic. So keep that in mind as well. Okay, so like for example here, I see nothing, nothing on the campaign level is bad which is extremely good, right? But then if you go down the ad set level, it's gonna be even more profitable, right? Because you understand that um, on the campaign level, there are some uh, some ad sets that won't perform as well. Okay, so for example, um, if I go into a big, let me see if there's a big campaign here. Okay, no, this is not, not big campaign. Um, let me see, LA. Yes, okay, so you can see here, right? There are many ad sets happening and like there's too, too many things happening. You cannot have clarity in uh, your decision making, right? So you can see um, the ones that are running, all here, okay, so all ROAS is very, very good, right? So I, I, don't, I don't have to touch this at all, 
okay it's only when you see that anything that's below your break even point or it's too close to a kpi that you are not comfortable with right so for example my break even royce is 1.6 anything that's too close to 1.6 or anything that's below 2 i'm going to examine it okay and so um you can uh, drill down here you can just press and it will sort by uh the the royce right okay so i'll sort by active okay okay so this is uh So I mean, I, I mean, need to scroll a bit. But okay, so I see here. So this is my lowest performing active campaign at the moment. This is the only one that's on. And it's at 2.26, right? So at 2.33, 2.52, okay? So like, because I know this, I go down into that specific campaign and understand what's happening. Okay, so can you see here, I'm, I'm, all I'm doing, right, is isolating the factors that um, that are not performing, right? And if they are actually not performing and I... Um, uh, figure that out why I either fix it or I turn it off okay so that is number one you you have to turn off uh, the assets that are not working too well okay another uh, not trick but like another tactic um, that I can show you I think it's uh, yes automated rules so automated rules right uh, in this case in this account here we rather do manual because I think we want more uh, control over this but you can create an automated rule for yourself so that you don't have to uh, think so much all the time okay you you let the machine uh, sorry you let the rules speak for themselves Okay, so you can see here, right? These are some of the rules that you can implement for yourself. So if you can see, um, this one is like the ad set will turn on when the ROAS is more than 2.5 and you spend more than $40, right? This is important because um, if I'm spending more than $40, there is some uh, statistical significance to it as well as the ROAS is doing well. Second one, uh, the budget will plus 20% if the ROAS is more than 2.5, right? So it makes sense, right? If it's performing well, increase the budget. If it's not turning off. Okay, you can see here, ROAS less than 1.8. So even though my, my break even ROAS is at 1.6, at 1.8, I'm already uncomfortable, I'm a bit shaky because like it shouldn't be that close, right? You don't want to play around with numbers, especially especially when you're on high spend. So spend more than $40, you turn it off when ROAS is uh, less than 1.8, okay? Uh, cost per purchase, more than 38, and uh, if the purchase is less than one. So on the ad set level, you can see here, turn off the ad set, right? Um, on the ad set level, if it's less, I have less than one purchase and then my cost per purchase is too high for me it's like $38 right I'll turn it off okay so it makes sense you're cutting your losses here and the last one is like um, spend more than 50 uh, ROAS less than 2.1 so I, I spend significant amount on on the ads on the ad level uh. you can see this ad this ad set different okay um, spend more than $50 and the ROAS itself on each ad is less than 2.1 I'll turn it off okay so I can click through here and then you can go and like uh, configure yourself. So you can pr press plus here, and then you can go and choose the result, whatever, right? You can you can create your own automated rules. This is very powerful because you don't have to keep thinking about it all the time. You are letting the machine running. Okay, al although sometimes Facebook is a bit wonky, and uh, the rules don't even like like work. Okay, so so keep that in mind as well. Um, I'd be bad to say, but like okay, but that's the Facebook engine. Okay, and then of course like um uh, obviously label your rules so it's very very clear. Yeah, and then um, that will basically help you in your ad buying as well. Okay, so um, I guess the taking point from this video, sorry I talked so long. <laughs> uh, the taking point for this video is like, there's so much data and your mind is going to get like, get like explode, right? So for you to actually uh, make decisions clearly, you need to always optimize for one metric, okay? In e-commerce, that, that's ROAS. It's like, it's like uh, it's not even an option, right? In e-commerce, that's ROAS, right? So you always see, I always see here, I, I couldn't bother with everything else here. I always go down, blah, 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 and I see, and I identify. Okay, so for example, which is my best performing creative? Like, for example, uh, 5.94, got them, okay. Okay, but uh, this is um, this is a retargeting ad, so I, I cannot consider that. 5, 5.73, okay, this is a border, uh, this is a add to cut uh, retargeting, so I, I can't consider. Okay, so for example, one is doing very well, 4.83 on cold traffic. Can you see this? Right, so I go in here, and then, uh, sometimes, like I also will go breakdown. So if you can see breakdown by delivery, and then you go in age and gender or even country, if you're going international, uh, uh, okay. So you go in age and gender, and then you try to find out where, why, where, uh, which, which population segment is the most profitable. And the reason why you want to do that is because um, if you are doing um, writing copy, right, you can tell the copywriter, hey, this angle is working very well for this demographic, right. So that that's very important as well. So you can see here, right. 
uh, like really fantastic numbers like for example 6.21 6.57 this is what 25 34 female 55 64 female right so i know that the female audience these two are very very strong and if you can see like patterns between each ad set as well that's very uh, very good so 6.21 6.57 is it the same as this one no it's not the same so that there's, there's not much of a pattern here 5.69 3.3 okay so so in this case like if you see across ad sets as well um the winning form, uh, not winning formula. The, the the thing that's important, the variable right here is female. Everybody on female is working well. Okay, it's not the age, so I can't isolate that as as a factor for for writing new copy or whatever. Okay, uh, hopefully, already hopefully that makes makes sense to you. Uh, but yeah, okay. So I guess I just want to boil down the three points to make it simple for you. If you <laughs> literally don't understand what I said, okay, um, can do automated rules to help you save time. Okay, but always keep track of your numbers as well. Number two is um, don't get confused. When there's so much data, just focus on one metric. If it's lead generation, uh, cost per lead or cost per book call. If it's e-commerce or literally anything else, uh, check the ROAS. Okay. And number three, you can dive down and uh, dive deeper into your campaigns after you have gotten the launch. Okay. So the launch is three days. After three days, then you go and make decisions and change things. Otherwise, you just let Facebook spend the money. Okay. They, they love money. Okay. Fair enough. But like... Um, you cannot make a decision if you don't have data. Okay, so hopefully you gain some insight to this. Um, yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. If you have any questions, like really anything at all, please go into the Facebook group and just ask, or or um, just put it in the comments section down below. Okay. Can. Um, I'll see you in the next video.